Welcome back. We're going to head off to Capital Casino. We're combining two sessions in this one vlog. The uh, first session was only the first three hands. It wasn't much action that day, but the hands that did occur were, well, interesting. The second time, the second uh, day, well, there was lots of interesting hands there. Some of them I played well and some of them, well, I didn't. Anyway, Sit back, relax, enjoy. Here it comes. First interesting hand of the day. We're in the big blind with two nines. There was a min raise to six. Two people called. And I raised to 30. Only one of the players calls. He's a solid regular who I have a lot of respect for. So we go heads up to the flop with 72 in. And it comes queen, five, deuce. I decide to check it mainly for deception. If he has a queen, I think he would bet it. And once he doesn't, I feel I'm way ahead. The turn is the seven hearts. I check again. I figure his aggressive style, he would probably take a stab at it. And he does, he bets 60. So I decide just to flat here. I considered raising, but I figure my flat looks like I have a possible flush draw. And if it bricks out, he's going to maybe take another stab on the river. So when the eight of spades comes, I check it over to him and he just checks it back and says he missed. And I take this one down with my nines. One limper from middle position. And we look at nine eight of diamonds, decide to raise to 20. We get a call from a fairly conservative player on the button and everyone else folds out. So we're going heads up to a flop with 47 in. And the flop is a good one. It's nine, jack, nine. So we smash the flop. We're going to continue. We bet out 20. And the person on the button didn't think very long before putting in the call. So I'm thinking they have some sort of jack or maybe queen 10. Turn card is not great. It's an ace of hearts. If they had a jack, this is going to scare them. I lead again, this time for 40. They think for quite a while. It looks like by the way they're moving their cards and kind of shuffling in their mind that this card is definitely a scare card for them. But I think they realized that I would bet a scare card like this. And so they might give me a loose call. And thinking that if they do call for the 40, they're pretty much committed for the rest of their chips, which is probably another 70 or $80 behind. So after thinking for quite some time, they put in the call. So we go heads up to the river with 167 and it comes a blank six of hearts. I just put them all in. Looking at their stack, it looks like about $70. And they think again for a while, but I think they're pot committed. If they called on the turn when the ace came and a blank comes on the end, they're pretty much going to be calling off here. So after pondering it for a while, they put the chips in reluctantly. I show them the nine. They flashed that they had two queens. This is definitely the most interesting hand of the day. There was one early limper. The player to my direct right raises to 15. I call with nine, 10 of clubs from the cutoff. And so does the small blind, big blind, and the early position limper. Flop comes three, four, seven with two diamonds, one club. It gets checked around to me and I put in the check. The turn card comes is the eight of clubs, probably the best turn card I can see. And now the big blind leads for $40. Um, I think he's making a move on the pot and I really sense that he's weak, maybe a one pair type of hand at best. And I decided to take away the betting lead by putting in a small raise to 100. My thought at the time was to try to isolate this person with what I perceived as a weak hand. If I make my hand, great, I can, you know, bet it comfortably. And if I miss, I can make a bet and he will probably fold all his one pair type of hands. The player in the small blind cold calls the 100. Um, I think he has some sort of flush draw. I don't know whether it's the diamond variety or the clubs. But now I have to worry about my flush draw not being a valid out. 
The person in the big blind who made the original bet tanks for a long time before finally putting in the call. I was happy he didn't jam on the pot because that would make me call off with just a draw. The fact that he just calls gives me some hope that a bluff would work on the river. The river card is a king of hearts. It's a complete blank unless someone had a flush draw containing a king. So with all the draws missing, I decided to go ahead and bluff the river. And I figured I had to go big. So I made it an all in jam for about $450. The small blind folds rather quickly, and now the big blind tanks again. He is a very good player, and he's trying to put the pieces together, and I don't think he believes my story. I mean, what hands would I check back on the flop and then put in a raise on the turn? If I had pocket eights, I probably would have bet the flop. If I had a straight with five six, I would probably want to protect it against the uh, flush draw. So the, really the only hand that I might play this way is 7-8 because I might not bet or the hand I have like a 9-10 of clubs which turned a lot of equity. Anyway he ends up folding and tells me later that he was thinking of calling me with a pair of threes. So I think I got away with one here. Plays like that are gonna get you in trouble. Hey, just a little intermission break in between the two sessions. I just want to thank everyone for liking and subscribing. It really does help out the channel. Also, if you haven't checked out Rad Poker, please do so. I'm going to be on there every Tuesday night at 7 p.m. Pacific. If you want to try to play a little heads up poker with me, you can take my virtual Dougie Doe. I did find some uh, glitches with the software. I, uh, I went ahead and mentioned them to Rad Poker support. They said that they have a fix on the way for those. They are aware of them. And so hopefully the software will be updated and everything will run smoothly. Anyway, thanks for watching. Thanks for your support. And uh, I'll see you on Rad Poker. Until then, here comes the next half of our vlog. This particular hand, I have aces on the button. It was limped around to me. I put in the raise and I get one caller. Flop is pretty good, comes king high, and when the player checks to me, I'm just going to make a small continuation bet of $15. If he has something fine, if not, that's fine too. I'll just take down this small pot. He puts in the fold, and we uh, win this small one with aces. There are two early position limpers. I look down at ace, king of hearts on the button, put in a raise, and only the first limper puts in the call for the 20. We're going heads up to a flop with 47 in. He's a fairly active player who gives a lot of loose calls. Flop is a good one for us. It's ace, 10, six with two diamonds. One check two, I decided to fire for 25. I'm not gonna give him a cheap draw at some sort of gut shot straight or maybe a flush draw. He quickly folds and we take this small pot down and add the chips to our stack. After the under the gun player folds, we raise with two jacks to 15. We end up getting a string of callers. So we go four ways to the flop. And the flop is pretty darn bad. It comes four, six, five with two spades. So coordinated board is not good, especially when it's like that. And the big blind leads out for a large bet of $50. This screams two pair or better. I just get out of the way, dump the hand. We have two players behind us who also might have middling cards. This is not an ideal situation to try to chase somebody down. Looking at king queen offsuit under the gun, I decide to raise to 15. I get one caller from the button who is a brand new player, first time he's ever played in the casino, a young player. And he's been playing very erratically all day long. So when the flop comes ace high, I decide to lead at it. He puts in the quick call. Turn card is a 10, not my favorite card, but I lead for 15 again. He puts in the call. 
as I said, he can have just about anything. So I check it over to him and he bets 15 on the river. I don't know. He could be doing this with a pair of 10. So I put in the call. He shows me queen 10 of diamonds. So this new uh, player owned me on this hand and they take it down. So we looked down at ace king on the button. There was an early limper and a player who posted from the cutoff. He checks his option. I raced to 20 with my ace king and it's folded through the blinds and back to the person in the cutoff. He puts in the call for the additional $17. So we're going heads up to the flop with 47 in the pot. I'm quite familiar with this player's game and he leads out for $30 on the flop. I believe he has possibly a pair of queens or maybe a flush draw. I decided to peel one, seeing if I can take it away from him if I catch a scare card. The turn card comes as a six of spades, which is definitely a scare card for someone who just flats you after you bet top pair. So he leads out for 35, small size bet, one that might be a little bit scared of getting raised. So I decided to try to represent a flush or maybe a big pair with a flush draw. So I raise to 110 and he quickly puts in the call. I don't like it when he calls. He should be folding all his weaker trash hands. When the river card comes as a three of hearts, I decided, well, maybe he won't fold for $75 more. Maybe he'll fold for a jam for 300 and he quickly snaps it off and shows that he called me down with queen 10, which was about where I put him on the hand. The story I was telling wasn't making any sense and he's smart enough to figure it out. So here's a big punt on my part. I told you you were gonna get in trouble. What were you thinking? You have nothing there. Just fold and move on to the next hand. The very next hand, I looked down at two aces in the cutoff. There was one early limper I raised to 15 and the big blind and the limper both put in the call. The flop comes 10, seven, deuce, all hearts. Please excuse the camera work. I was trying to readjust it after losing my stack last hand. The first player checks, second player puts in a bet for 43. I decided just to smooth call this 43. He is a wild player who is likely to just punt his chips off. Now the blind Check raises all in to 67. The original player who led puts in the call. I unfortunately can only call this bet. It doesn't reopen the betting. Otherwise I would put in a pretty hefty raise. So I ended up putting in the call and we go to a turn card with 250 in the main and we have a dry side pot. Turn card is a seven of spades. Not the best card in the world, but definitely not the worst one. And now the player leads really small for $26. I just jam over him. He might be crazy enough to call with some sort of flush draw. He ends up folding. So we go to see the river up a king of hearts. I turn over my aces with the ace high flush. The other player who was all in had king queen with the queen of hearts. I opened to 12 from middle position with ace nine suited, end up getting three callers. Person directly to my left, the next person, and the big blind. So we go four ways to a flop with 49 in the pot. Flop is so so. It's eight, seven, five with two diamonds. So I have a gut shot and two over cards, but nothing I'm going to lead at with three other players in the pot. Turn card is a miracle six. I decided to check it for deception, see if someone might overplay a four or maybe just take a stab at it. The last player puts in a bet for $35. I think he is more likely to have a nine. I think he probably would bet a nine, 10 as a draw when last to act on the flop. So I feel really strongly about my hand that I have the best. And I decided to check again, hoping that he would, you know, fire off with all his bluffs. 
he doesn't disappoint. He bets 60 on the river. And at this point, I should probably just put in the raise. You know, he could be firing with a four and he would pay me off. But for some odd reason, I just put in the call. I don't, can't really explain it. And he shows that he had ace king. I wouldn't have got any extra money, but I really should be raising that. I raised an early limper to 15 for middle position. End up getting a caller from the cutoff. And then the button puts in a min raise. This is that new player I was speaking of earlier. He's been getting very, very lucky, winning a lot of hands with, you know, hands you shouldn't be winning with. Anyway, 15 is way too small. I put in the call and so does the player behind me. So we're going to end up going three ways to a flop with a uh, jack 10 of spades. Let's hope we hit something here. Flop comes out. Well, complete error. Five, three, four with two clubs. I check it thinking of surrendering any bet and it gets checked around. Turn card is a king of spades. I had thoughts of betting this trying to re represent a king but this kind of smashes the button range, but he quickly checks it back. Now when the nine of clubs comes on the river, I'm thinking, okay, I can represent a king that I might've checked. I could represent a flush. And with about $100 in the pot, I figure 75 would be a right amount to go for. Both players ended up folding. I think this was a much smarter type of bluff than the previous one where I punted all my chips. This is probably the hand of the day. Couple limpers. I looked down at ace two suited in the cutoff, decide to raise to 15. We get a call from the person in the big blind who is a fairly solid player, more on the conservative side. So I think he has a decent hand. The next limper calls and then the person in the hijack decides to make it 45. He is the action player from a few hands ago and uh, I'm not folding to a $30 raise with a hand that can win a big pot. I put in call, so does the big blind. The other limper folds out. So we're going three ways to a flop with 156 in and the flop comes pretty damn good. It's ace, 10, deuce. I was watching the player in the big blind. I played a lot with him and have a fairly good read that he liked the flop and he ends up checking it to the aggressor. I'm thinking he has some sort of ace. And when the initial three better checks it to me, I decided to go on a sizing of 50 to $60. I made it 60 thinking that the big blind, if he had an ace like ace queen, ace jack, he would rip it in, which he does. So I feel like I'm way ahead of him. It's possible he had ace 10, but I'm thinking more like ace queen or ace jack. The other player surprised me. He put in the call for the 155 jam. I really don't think he would play an ace this way. So I'm kind of confused on what he might have. I'm thinking maybe just, you know, two Broadway cars looking for a gut shot. Anyway, I figure, yeah, let's get it in. I, I like my hand against him, so I rejam. He calls off like $115 more. I figure I'm two blanks away from winning an $850 pot. Dealer says, okay, here we go. Jack of clubs, probably the worst card in the deck. Puts out any gut shots. Also hits the big blinds range of either ace queen or ace jack. If that wasn't bad enough. The river card comes as a 10, which counterfeits me for sure. Big blind rolls over ace queen. So I definitely lose to him. And then the person to my right says, ha ah, ha ha, that's not good enough. Here you go. I got the king queen. So we lose this big pot. You know, I thought I had more equity, but when I ran the numbers, I only had 58% chance of winning it after the flop. I thought it was closer to 70% in my mind. So, you know, I guess it's not as bad as I originally thought, but it still hurts.
Thanks for watching guys. Here are our totals for the two days. Um, I played pretty bad that second day. That was a huge punt of chips. I mean, I just basically threw away $450. I made some other good plays, but I made some bad plays. High variance is not always the best. Sometimes you just gotta fold a hand or two. Anyway, I really appreciate you guys watching. Again, I'll be on Rad Poker uh, Tuesday night, 7 p.m. Pacific, if you want to play some heads-up poker then. And until then, run good at the tables, and we'll see you next time.